originally a hotel built by Henry Flagler. And Henry Flagler was the second richest man in the 1800s next to Rockefeller. Um, in fact, they were business partners together in Standard Oil. Um, even more so, it was Rockefeller's name and Henry Flagler's hard work. Now, Flagler was born to a very poor family. His dad was a Presbyterian minister. And at the age of 14, him and his half-brother were sent from upstate New York to Ohio to go work at a general store. There, he meets his first wife, Mary Harkness. They get married, and they have three kids. His second daughter, Carrie, dies around the age of three with pulmonary tuberculosis. And at that point, he wants to change the social status of his family. So he takes his savings, and he makes an investment into grain. And I want to show you guys a quick picture of Henry Flagler in his early 30s. He's quite dashing. He looks like Timothy Dalton, in my opinion. <laughs> Now, um, so, so he makes an investment into grain uh, because people like to drink, so he made a lot of money. Now, when the Civil War broke out, the government goes to him and kind of makes, makes, an off, makes him an offer to make an investment into salt because the government was buying salt by the pound to preserve meat on the battlefield for the soldiers. And he made a little bit of money. But when the Civil War ended, that market tanked. He lost almost everything. But the pennies he has left, he goes back to the grain industry. Um, the business that, he, that he, he, he still owned, but his brother was running it. And when he went back, he met a new office worker, an office clerk, and that was um, Rockefeller. He had no money, he had no capital, all he had was big ideas. So he goes, he goes uh, Rockefeller goes to Henry Flagler's brother, Stephen, and he's like, hey, do you want to make an investment in my company that doesn't exist yet? He's like, sure, on one condition. You make my brother Henry your direct business partner, and I'll give you $100,000. And that's what happened in 1869. They started the Standard Oil Company, which is Exxon Mobil today. They moved, to, they moved to New York City, and they become bajillionaires overnight. Now, at this point, Henry's wife does have tuberculosis. And the only treatment for that back then is coming down to the warm climate in the winter months. So they would come down to Jacksonville and take day trips here to St. Augustine. And at that time, Flagler hated, hated this town. It was just podunk, backwater, nothing. Uh, but his wife dies in 1881. And it wasn't really socially acceptable to be wealthy and single. So he marries quickly. He marries his second wife, Ida Alice Shorts, who was the nurse to his first wife. They get married and they spend their honeymoon here in 1883. And things are changing. The snowbirds are coming down, the hotels are being built. He sees potential to make money. So he builds a railroad from DC all the way here to St. Augustine. And he starts construction on this first hotel, the Ponce de Leon across the street. And when he broke around for that, looked over here, and he saw a nasty swamp. And he said, my guests are gonna tell this money, look at that. So he filled all of this in, and he built this hotel, the, uh, the Alcazar Hotel, uh, which proved to be 10 times more popular than the hotel across the street. Because this is where all the fun stuff was. We have our casino, and a casino is not a place where you gamble, it's very illegal back then. It's just more so like an adult leisure space. So we had spas, swimming pools, um, massage parlors, but we also have bowling alleys, movie theaters, bicycle clubs, tennis courts, archery, and all the fun stuff over here. Uh, so these three wings right here are the hotel rooms. This lobby was always the main lobby, um, and the area that we're going to be walking into a little bit later on used to be the kitchen. And the dining halls used to be these, are, are now these courtyards on either side of these buildings here. And now, I'm, I'm going to be giving you more details as we walk through the building about these things, but essentially we were a hotel all the way until 1931. Um, we shut down partly because of the Great Depression, among some other factors, but we were vacant until 1946. And that's when this guy comes to town, Otto Lager. He's a publisher in Chicago. He's, he owned many different kinds of magazines, but his most famous magazine was Hobbies Magazine. Um, and he had no money in the stock market. So he's doing just fine during the Great Depression. But he's an opportunist. He buys people's private collections for half their value. And he fills two mansions full of stuff. What you see here on the floor is roughly 20 to 25% of our entire collection. So he bought this building in 1946, 1947, and then we became a museum in 1948. Again, uh, so we're going to go to the house this time. <laughs> 